नमस्कार माय नेम इज सुदशील घोष वेलकम टू माय चैनल आई एम टीचिंग टिकर कैड ऑन यूट्यूब टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी मोशन सेंसर एंड वी आर आल्सो गोइंग टू सी अ मोट सर्व मोटर ओके सो लेट अस बिगिन आर एक्सरसाइज ओके सो हियर इज आवर टिंकर कैड इंटरफेस वी आर गोइंग टू क्रिएट आर न्यू सर्किट so when we introduce the motion sensor we will also do a few things first of all we'll bring the breadboard next we'll need to turn the breadboard so that we have got enough space then we are going to bring in the arduino we're going to turn the arduino so that we have got enough space and the first thing that we do is to connect our ground to the breadboard to this particular row okay so what we have now is the ground are distributed over this row now next we will go for connecting the 5 volt power to this particular another row so here is the 5 volt connected to this particular row and we have the ground connected to this particular row now we will introduce the motion sensor so the motion sensor is also known as the proximity infrared sensor this is called the pir sensor and if we zoom in to the pir sensor if we zoom in we will try to see what are the elements of this particular sensor we will have the signal so essentially this signal would be an input to the digital pin we have the power and which will take input from the 5 volt connection and this is the ground which will be connected to the ground okay so let us go ahead and we will connect the proximity infrared sensor to the breadboard now as we have already learned we cannot connect like this because these are all connected at the you know internally these are all be all are connected internally and this also are all connected internally there will be no flow of current there will be no use of connecting it like this so therefore what we have to do is connect this somewhere here so we will connect it like this so they are not internally connected so it is possible to get the signal and it is possible to have a current flow okay fine so we are seeing that this particular terminal belongs to the signal terminal so what we can do is take pin number 13 from here and connect it to this particular column so what we have done is connected the pin number 13 to this particular column and we have done that so next is we have to connect this particular terminal or this particular pin to the 5 volt connection so this is the 5 volt connection so we are going to take one wire from here and connect it say for example here okay and again we can take one wire from here and connect it to this particular a okay so what we have done is we have taken the 5 volt connection and distributed it over this particular column we have taken the ground connection and distributed it over this particular column okay so therefore if i want to connect if i want to connect my power to this particular 5 volt one so this is the 5 volt one so what we have to do is bring from here and take one connection from here and we will connect this to the power so we can connect it to this particular hole we can see here so what we have now done is connected this particular wire from the 5 volt connection to the 
power pin of the proximity infrared sensor all right the next job is to connect the ground so how can we do that this is the ground wire okay this is the this is the place where the ground is connected and from here we have converted we have taken the ground from here to this particular column and so therefore we are going to take one connection from here and connect it to this particular column so therefore the proximity infrared is connected properly so for the sake of convenience uh, because there might be problems with the color convention so we are going to color all the wires connected to the ground as black so that it will be there for correct notation so therefore we are connected all the wires black so whichever wire is connected to the 5 volt power i am going to color it red in color okay so this is also there it is it will be red in color and of course this particular wire will also be red in color okay so therefore all the red wires are connected to the power pin and all the black wires are connected to the the ground pin and we have this particular wire which is connected to the signal pin so we have to first of all analyze what kind of data does the proximity infrared sensor give to us we have to analyze this particular data okay so therefore what we have to do we have to read the data and we have to print the data these are the two things that we have to do it is mandatory to do that okay we read the data and print the data fine okay so how to do so we will begin the coding section we are going to put everything to the trash there you are so we will create a variable as we have done for ultrasonic we will create a variable so we will say pir okay so the variable name is pir so we have to read that value so let us put it here set pir to something here and what we are going to do is we are going to take the reading from the pir sensor so it is written here read digital pin this is a digital pin and we can read the digital pin from here so so we are going to read the digital pin and you can see that the digital pin is connected to pin number 13 of the arduino board so we are going to set it to pin number 13 of the arduino board okay so since we have read it now we are ready to print it so we are going to output and it is saying print to serial monitor there you are we are print to serial monitor and instead of hello world we are going to print the pir variable so we have now printed the pi variable okay now since we have read and we have now going to print so let us now check what are the kind of outputs that this thing generates so the connection is complete so what we have to do now is to run the simulation so we'll start the simulation now and let us see what happens okay so we will click here and you can see a ball similar to when the sound ultrasound sensor was the ultrasonic sensor was and let us move as soon as we move as we, if we don't move the values which we are seeing here are zero but as soon as we move it will detect the motion and it will give it is giving one here so when it we are moving they it is going to give me one value if we make it stationary it is giving me zero value so this is a motion detecting system okay so let us consider the problem like in a mall okay if you can if you go to a mall and we approach a door that particular door opens automatically so how does the door open it detects the motion and based on our motion the door opens automatically okay so let us stop the simulation here so we are now going to see another particular device a component another particular component which we call the servo motor so this is the servo motor okay and again 
as we see here the servo motor has three pins okay if you zoom in here this is this particular pin is connected to the ground this particular pin is connected to the power and this particular pin is connected to the signal so this is how the servo motor looks like okay in in practice also it looks like this so what we are going to do is we are going to rotate this properly so that we can connect it properly oh fine so we are going to place this here okay no problem here so we can see that this is the signal pin so we will connect the signal pin to any of these signal areas so like for example it is number two so we can connect it to pin number two so let us do that so pin number two and we are connecting it to the signal and we have done that fine so once we have connected it to signal next we are seeing that this is connected to power so remember that any the wires these are connected to this particular line is connected to power so we need to bring another line we need to bring so we'll because this is the signal so we will give it a different color let us do that we will give it a different color like for example the purple we'll do that now we have to connect this particular pin to the 5 volt thing so the, to the 5 volt pin if i want to connect so we need to bring one particular wire from here to this particular column okay so we will connect this and we will make this red in color because it is connected to the 5 volt pin we have connected it here and therefore then we can connect from here power to this particular place okay so therefore my power is connected to this particular hole and this particular hole is connected to this particular place and this particular place is connected via this wire to the 5 volt pin so we have been able to connect this to the 5 volt pin next is the ground so what we have to do we have to bring another particular wire from this place to this place for example we will connect this red black in color because remember from this is the ground wire so this particular wire is connected to this particular row okay this particular column you can see here and with this particular column we have we are going to connect this particular column to this particular hole and we are going to connect from here to this particular hole so as a result this particular ground pin is connected via these wires to the ground that and this particular wire is connected to the ground so all these things are connected now what we can do now all right so what we are going to do is we are going to see a code which can turn this motor okay so let us see a code which will turn this motor so what we'll do is we'll put this into a rash wheel okay so don't worry about the code we will restore the code later okay so what are we going to do now we are going to turn the motor now remember motor turning is a part of the output okay so how can we do that so it says rotate servo pin rotate servo on pin so where is the servo connected remember the signal pin is connected to pin number two so we are going to rotate the servo on number pin two okay so we are saying pin number two there you are pin number two and we want to connect it to say for example rotate by 90 degrees let us do that if we run the simulation now if you run the simulation it will you will see that this particular you know this particular thing re rotates by 90 degrees if we stop we can stop the simulation and we'll start the simulation again it will rotate by 90 degrees all right since we have been able to rotate by 90 degrees now we are going to implement a condition if there is movement then the servo motor will rotate this is what we are going to achieve if there is movement so the pir sensor is going to detect the movement for us and if there is movement we will rotate the servo motor that is how we are going to do that now remember that the pir sensor is connected to pin number 13 so we have to read the data from pin number 13 
and then if the value if there is motion that means if the value is 1 we will rotate the servo pin that is what we are going to do okay fine so what we are going to do we are going to take an input and first of all we have already have the variable here so we are going to take this particular thing here and we are going to read the value from the PIR pin so how do I can do that we can go and go to input and it says read a digital pin and we are going to read the digital pin number 13 fine so we have read the digital pin number 13 so now if the value of PIR is 1 we are going to rotate it if it is not 1 then we will not rotate it so what we can do here we can go to the control here and if there is a system called if then else okay so here is the so we are now going to compare pir and one so we'll go to the math here and let us take this because look at the shape here so it is going to accept this particular shape here we are saying pir so we are going to compare we are going to check whether pir has become one or not so we'll put equal to here if pir is one then you rotate so how do i do that rotate otherwise you don't rotate so that is here okay so now what we are going to rotate servo on pin the servo is connected to pin number two so this is we are going to say pin number two we are going to rotate by 90 degrees and again pin number two rotate to zero degrees so if there is motion it will open or it will rotate if there is no motion it will not rotate or come back to the zero degree position or come back to its original position that is how the things happen here so now we are going to test the code so let us do the testing of the code we'll fold the code here we we'll start the simulation now and let us see how things happen so let us see if there is a motion we'll move this as we move this the rotate is rotation happens if there is no movement if we leave it the rotation you know there it returns back to its original position so we if there is movement okay so this servo pin is at 90 degree position if there is no movement if we leave it therefore the servo pin will return back to its original position so therefore through this simulation we have been able to implement a kind of door opening system using the proximity infrared sensor and the servo motor. I hope you have understood this session. If you are new to my channel, please like, share and subscribe. If you are an old subscriber to this channel, please ask your friends to attend my demo sessions. We will stop the simulation here. Thank you for attending my session.